somebody like me. Hello there everyone and welcome to today's video and today we're going to be taking a look at this. We are going to be putting a brand spanking new hard disk drive inside our Xbox One S here and we're going to try and do that in less than 10 minutes. Now you might want to do this for a couple of reasons. Maybe you're well out of space on your drive and you just want a bit more storage or otherwise maybe your console's having some trouble. Maybe it's freezing, crashing, shutting down, having trouble shutting down, having trouble starting up. Whatever it is, it's likely a hard disk drive problem. So we can use this process to replace a faulty hard drive for a brand new one. So what do we need in order to get this done then? Well, apart from your Xbox One console, you'll need the following items. This procedure, by the way, will work on any Xbox One console. Original FATs, One S's, One X's, and even digital editions. Firstly, you'll need a Windows-based PC or laptop computer. It needs to be Windows-based because later on we'll be making use of an NTFS-based file system. Next, you'll need a hard drive or SSD. Yes, either will work, but there are the following hard requirements. It has to be a minimum 500GB in size. Any smaller and the drive will not partition correctly, throwing an E101 or E102 error when you pop it back in your Xbox. The best sizes to use are 500GB, 1TB or 2TB drives, as these are officially supported SKUs from Microsoft. Be careful of cheaper SSDs. Some of these are 480GB in size and are not compatible at the bottom end. Off-size disks can be used, such as 750GB and 1.5TB drives, 512GB SSDs, etc. They'll just format to the lowest available officially supported SKU. So for example, a 1.5TB drive will become a 1TB drive to the Xbox. You can't use the additional space without a lot of hacking around unfortunately, but this comes with some potential issues at update or system reset time and therefore isn't recommended. Otherwise, it just needs to be a 2.5 inch form factor, so a laptop style disk, and SATA based. If the new drive you'll be using has been used for something before, we'll need to hook it up to our PC to prepare it for use in our Xbox before we begin. In this instance, we'll need a USB to SATA adapter, or you can hook your drive up internally to your PC or laptop if you have the available drive slots, cables and connectors. Finally, you'll need a USB stick. These days a minimum 16 gig stick is recommended. This is because the system update file, known as an SU1, that we'll be downloading from Microsoft shortly, is around 6.5GB minimum in size these days. USB 2.0 or 3.0 doesn't really matter, the main thing is the available storage space on the drive. We'll be needing to format this stick with an NTFS file system, which is unusual for a USB stick, so back up anything you need to keep safe from it before continuing. And lastly, an important note for anybody who's an Xbox Insider. Unfortunately, the Insider program isn't compatible with the OSU1 download that's publicly available. There is no recovery file for anybody on an Xbox Insider dash, and consequently, if your machine is enrolled in that program, it won't be compatible with this process. Instead, what you'll need to do is wait until the next publicly available dashboard update, at which time the OSU1 tool will be updated, and you'll then be able to restore or upgrade your console. So for now, hang fire and don't try this at home. If you do attempt it, you'll just be greeted with an E106 error at update time. So for now, just hang fire. So without further ado, let's get our USB stick prepared and let's get started. The first thing we need to do then is jump onto the Microsoft website and visit the page shown. This link is available in the video description. Halfway down the page you'll see a box for step 1, download the OSU 1 tool. Expand this box by clicking the arrow and in there is a link for the OSU 1 file download. Click this link and this will start the download process of the file to your PC's download folder. All you need to do then is wait for this download to finish. Once the download has finished, browse to the folder where the OSU1.zip file is located. You'd also be best advised to download the bootanim.dat file also linked in the video description. Once you've got both files, you'll be good to start. Insert the USB stick you'll be using into your PC. Remember, back up anything you want to keep on that stick now. Open an explorer window, browse to this PC and you should see the drive show. Here it's my E drive. Right click the drive and select the format option. Open the file system drop down and select NTFS. This is very important as the Xbox will not recognise our OSU1 file later if we don't do this. Allocation unit size can be left as is or set to default allocation size. Finally, make sure quick format is ticked and click start. After a few seconds you should get a message that the format was successfully completed. Click OK and close the format window. Next, go to your OSU1.zip download and open the file. However you choose to do so, extract or copy the dollar system update folder to the root or the front page 
of your USB stick. This will take a few minutes even with a USB 3.0 stick. Once this process is completed, you should be left with the dollar system update folder on your USB stick and all the contained files within. Go back to your downloads and copy the bootanim.dat file for your Xbox console you also downloaded earlier. Paste this file into the dollar system update folder on your USB stick. The bootanim.dat file is the startup animation you see when you turn on your Xbox. By default, this file is missing from the OSU1 download and will cause a black screen on startup if it's missing. If you forget to copy the file, don't worry. The Xbox will download this file itself at some point in future, but until it does, you will see an extended black screen on system startup before it loads into the dashboard. Once you've copied the file, eject the USB stick from the computer and remove it. That's our USB stick taken care of. In the next step, we'll prepare our hard disk drive or SSD for use for that Xbox console. Go ahead and connect your hard disk or SSD to your PC. Once done, right click the start menu and select disk management. Expand the window and wait for it to load. Take a look at the list of disks at the bottom and identify which is your hard drive or SSD you'll be using for your Xbox. You can use the disk capacity, partition names and sizes or the fact the disk is possibly empty to give you a clue if necessary. In my case, my target drive is disk 2 as identified down the left hand side of the window. Next open the start menu and type cmd to open a command prompt. You'll need to right click and run this as administrator. Once the command prompt opens, type disk part or one word and hit enter. Once disk part loads, at the command prompt type list disk, hit enter. Again look at the drive sizes and free space and verify the disk number matches the one you identified earlier. Mine does, it's disk 2 and yours should too. Once that's done, type select disk followed by your disk number, in my case I type select disk 2 and hit enter. Check that disk part says that your disk is now the selected disk. Once confirmed, type the word clean and hit enter. This will take a few seconds before disk part hopefully comes back and reports that the disk was successfully cleaned. Once done you can close the command prompt window by clicking the windows X button or by typing exit and hitting enter twice. Back in disk management the drive status should now say not initialized and there should be no partitions shown on your drive. The space should merely be unallocated. Eject the drive and remove it. Otherwise, shut down your PC and remove your drive. We're now good to go to our Xbox and begin the hard drive installation. So now's the time to start installing your hard drive into your Xbox. There are plenty of good tutorials on the net for disassembling Xboxes, so I won't go into that detail here. iFixit.com would be a good place to start that I would highly recommend for good guides and clear images. The hard drives are generally fairly easy to get to inside these consoles, but you'll definitely need a pry tool like an iSESMO and a Security Torx T9 screwdriver for the most of the required disassembly. Once your drive is hooked up and the machine reassembled, reconnect the power and HDMI cables to the console and make sure you follow along with the next few steps very, very closely indeed. This is the part where the magic happens to get our Xbox to accept our new hard disk drive or SSD. We'll be using something I like to call the three beep technique to force our Xbox to take our OSU1 USB update. Firstly, you'll need to connect your USB stick to a free USB port on your Xbox One. The front or side ports are typically easiest accessed. Once done, press and hold both the eject and sync buttons. If you have a digital edition console, you only have to hold the sync button as you don't have an eject button. Keep this button combination held until I say otherwise. To start then, and whilst holding this button combination in, tap the power button. When the machine powers up, you'll receive the typical power up tone. Within 5 to 10 seconds, you should hear a second power up tone and see the troubleshooter menu on screen. Remember to keep that sync and eject button held in. Within a couple more seconds, you should hear a third power up tone from the console. As soon as the third power up tone sounds, release your sync and eject button combination. A couple of seconds after this, you should hear a fourth and final power up tone. This confirms that our OSU1 source on the USB stick has been accepted and the update will proceed now using this repository. Now you can sit back and relax while the update process completes. At the end of stage 2, the console will power down and restart of its own accord. Don't panic or touch anything, this is perfectly normal. Stage 3 of 3 will resume when the console powers back up. 
Any quick E100 errors after the restart at around 66% will typically point towards issues with your console's BD-ROM drive. Otherwise, all being well, you should be greeted by the initial setup screen within a few minutes. If the update process fails at any point, it's worth doing a full system reset before retrying. If the reset option isn't immediately available on screen, boot the system to the troubleshooter menu using our earlier button combination and holding until the second power up zone is heard. Sync your controller and select reset this Xbox and reset and clear everything. Once done, retry the update procedure and fingers crossed all will go through successfully second time around. Sometimes persistent system settings can cause this issue, so try not to panic if this happens to you initially. And that is ultimately how we do that ladies and gentlemen. As always, if you found this video useful, then please hit that like button and share this video with anyone you think may find it useful. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to pop them below and I'll do my best to review them and come back to you where I can. I'd encourage you to take a look at the other videos on the channel and if it's of interest then please hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell to be informed when I next upload. Thank you all for watching and please take a look at my Patreon if you want to support my channel further. A link is available in the description below. Until next time, I've been AP, you've all been fantastic and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye for now. Somebody like me